Panther fans, get ready for a deep dive on all 22 because the, the film, film don't lie. lie. Let's get right to it. Monday night football here at Bank of America Stadium on Monday night. Mm. That's a novel concept. The Panthers hosting the Miami Dolphins. And, guys, you know what we say about Dolphins come to town? You got got some good eating, right? It's time for the Pescatarians to step up. Yes. (laughs) We're we're talking, I don't know if you can eat dolphin. No. No. Not in, no. Well, my eat dolphin. Well, that's different fish. We're not talking about a little flipper. We are talking about porpoise. And y'all know the slug for this segment is sea meat. Yes. What's that mean? Because, I mean, that's how I differentiate between what I eat. I don't eat land meat. I eat sea meat. Okay, I got you. And some air meat. Like okay. Okay. chicken. <laughs> chicken and turkey. Well, chickens don't fly. Well, we'll call them air meat. They got wings. They, 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 they can get off the ground they a little can. bit. They yeah. can if when they When some chase to. them, old fox chase them, they'll fly. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of chasing, this Panthers defense uh, is going to face a Dolphins team coming in after two after losing two straight games. Now, guys, as we looked at the film, I think we were all in agreement. This isn't the same Jay Cutler we're used to looking at as a no, and, and I think that uh, you know he's he's gotten an opportunity to come back and back with uh, Adam Gase, and I think that you know he's taken some throws and uh, allowing the offense just to kind of work. You know, obviously when he came in this season, he was a little bit behind the eight ball, mm-hmm. but uh, and, and so sometimes that m- might mean that you need to take that check down or those softer throws, and and that's something that he's done uh, this year. Where in the past, when you see him up in Chicago. You know, he's airmailing it out there and getting the interceptions and stuff like that. So that might have been him just taking a step back, you know, this all season and being able to see some of that and reflect. And now he's got another opportunity, so he's seeing things differently. Yeah, and I, you know, it's something that we kind of know the situation because of Cam and the slow process it was to get back acclimated. You know, with Cutler, it, it's just like Mike said, it's a little bit of an eight ball when you're starting that far behind. But, you know, this last game against the Raiders that had, I thought, a solid performance. He's got. 10 touchdowns on the year, five interceptions, 66 percentage rate for his completion. So, um, you know, you can't go to sleep on this guy, and he's he's finding ways to to get some of his weapons the ball. And there's some there's some new weapons out there that the the Panthers need to take note of after they trade away their starting running back. Yeah, and speaking of weapons, I think one guy because of the little transition at quarterback Julius Thomas, and there was a play in that on that uh, game film that we saw. You know, where he goes to Thomas, and Thomas is in a favorable matchup. And anytime they get him on the outside and they rotate a safety or a linebacker over there to cover him, like on that play, he is going to have big plays. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, um, you're, you're, you're seeing some things there, and there's always one guy you got to keep an eye on in that defense. Yeah, no, Dominic Sue. I mean, he is the man. I for six foot four, three hundred and five pounds, or whatever that number is, how athletic he is. Um, you know, you've seen him overpower guys and use some different moves, but man, on one play I was watching that last game against the Raiders and you know, they ran a T E stunt and then Dominic Sue is um you know, keeps going on the T the where he's the penetrator trying to get past that tackle and do what he can to get over there and you're not just kind of doing it to free up the end. I mean, he continues with that penetration, gets around that tackle. And this part just amazed me is how he leaves his feet and takes a swipe at the ball and gets it out of the quarterback's hands. I mean, that's a strip sack right there. And uh, it was just unbelievable to see this guy that's 300 pounds taking flight and with his hand-eye coordination is able to take a swipe at that ball. It's uh, it's almost Julius Peppers-like in a way that a guy that big can be that fluid. Hey, Ruck, when Kevin saw that play, the biggest part of the play to him wasn't Sue. You know what it was? The lineman picking the ball up. Because he started reliving the dream, didn't he? Well, let, let tell me tell you. This, here's the thing. I, I, I put myself in that guy's shoes for a moment. And, you know, there's times where I've given up a sack or – or the ball's been loose around me, and you pick that thing up and you're thinking, all right, I just gave up a sack fumble, but, man, I can make a tone for it right yeah, here it. as it. I pick nope. up. And, man, he was looking sweet. <laughs> I mean, nice. he had the ball. He's moving. I'm, he's looking good. And then Kiko Alonso comes in there and blows him up. Yeah. He goes airborne. <laughs> and then the worst part about it is he fumbles it. The Dolphins recover it, but he's laying on his back prone right there. There's about four or five Dolphins <laughs> are leaping on him trying to get the ball. Yeah. So it was – it was just not a, a good situation, fancy. man. There's a lot of stuff going wrong on that play for him. Yeah, a lineman's dreams are normally very, very short. Short, <laughs> quick and short. <laughs> quick and short. Um, you look at some of the things that uh, Oakland did uh, against them. One, they were able to 
run the ball with uh, Lynch. So I, I expect the Panthers game yeah. running game to to pick up there. Um, let's skip over to the Panthers side of this thing because we know one of the things they wanted to do all season was run the ball, and we started to see some signs ruck on the on the offensive side of the ball run game and cam got things started didn't he? yeah my, my whole thing uh, you know about you know anytime this offense slows down or you don't see the energy I looked at number one and this past game you saw his energy when he gets a first down or you use the bootleg in particular um, the one where they they had a they had a eight man I think they had a nine man eight man box mm. and they send a blitzer and he play out, and he fakes the the, the ball to uh, Stu and rolls out, and it could not have been a better play against a better defense. The defense ran right into the teeth of this thing, and he pulls out, runs that naked bootleg all the way down the field. And the one thing that I really love about that play is at the very end, Cam slides right before he gets hit. And as a defensive guy, that's the that's one thing that will make you hotter in Texas chili is when you're about to get the hit, this quarterback that's done ran about 50 yards on you, and you're going to lay him out, and then he slides. That will aggravate you. And he gets up and he does his thing. That is what I saw last week, and that's the energy that's going to get this offense going is when Cam can run the ball – and he can create havoc to defense because you have to keep an eyeball on him. Stay right there, Kevin, because he said energy. Mm -hmm. And that is what it was all about on Sunday against your arch rival, NFC South division rivals, to bring that energy back to Bank of America Stadium. Yeah, and, you know, everyone's looking at number one to see his energy level, what he's trying to do, what he's trying to bring to that offense. And, Mike's exactly right. You know, there's some designed runs out there. Um, you know, one in particular he had a zone read on. And, you know, they crashed that thing so violently because they really think they're just going to give it to the running back there. And their um, outside linebacker, Brooks Reed, he takes a hook, line, and sinker, just goes directly into the backfield for Christian McCaffrey on a zone read. And Cam pulls that thing, and he's basically out in space against 37, one of their defensive backs out there, and Cam is just too big and strong. Yeah, yeah. And when you get that kind of a run, he's able to get upfield. He's not taking a major hit or anything like that. Um, I think it's demoralizing to a defense because there's so much to defend, and now, oh, man, we got to defend the quarterback. I think Cam's really starting to see that, um, you know, he's when you think of quarterback, you think of a passer. He's thinking himself more now as a football player, what do I got to do? It means some runs sometimes where I don't give it to CMC. I run the thing. It works out great. And that gives, I mean, that whole stadium lit up. The energy of the sideline and all the fans, just those type of things really get them energized. Well, one thing uh, in looking at the film, the other the other play that stood out was the, the similar one where he pulled, and I think he had a plan flip to Christian McCaffrey. Now, we, we did this on game day and also talked about it on self-scout on, on, on Panthers.com. The bottom line is the defense has to devote a certain number of guys to stop the run. Then they have to devote another guy to stop Cam. Then they have to devote another guy to the pitch. Okay, and When you go through counting all that, it's either that numbers count is either seven or eight. And either way you cut it, that only leaves three guys for everything else. Yeah. So moving forward. That has to bode well, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. I think, you know, with that in particular, too, if there's just one delay, an assignment error, you know, we saw that on that flip touchdown to CMC. If if all those guys aren't on the exact same page, you're going to see, like, what happened on Sunday where, where Christian McCaffrey's just running in scot-free with no defenders even near him. So now these defenses have to, to protect the whole entire field. They can't really just hone in on that line of scrimmage and pack in the box and think they're going to stop the running game that way. Uh, they're attacking the perimeters now, and I think that's a good thing. Well, attacking the perimeters, but uh, what is left? There's, there's got to be something else because, yeah, you got over 100 yards. I'm not diminishing that accomplishment. Cam had 85 of those. But I know we want to get those running backs going. What do, what do the Panthers need to do to get to accomplish that? Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. You know, the, you know being a fan and, and looking on this side of the ball, what I see is the offensive coordinator Mike Shula. I think this is an opportunity for him to look and say two things. One, how can I get Jonathan Stewart rolling again? And that means to me going back to some more basic traditional run plays, going north and south. I know when you get CMC 
and you get him going sideways, he has the speed to be able to do that. But Stu is built differently that making him go left or right, I think, plays in the defensive hand. And so I'm looking for more of that traditional, just some simple lead opens, some some downhill plays, some sweeps. Stu does a very good job in the screen game. Just finding different ways to get him involved and get him north and south. I think you really need him um, if you're going to go all the way. The other thing is his confidence. Um, as, as a running back, you, you lose two footballs and two fumbles. Confidence has got to be you know shaking a little bit. So I want to go right back to him Monday night on a big stage and grab his confidence back right away and get this offense run game going downhill and then switch the game up with putting uh, McCaffrey going sideways and in the slot. Yeah, a lot of a lot of options there. Uh, let me just pick up on one point about Jonathan Stewart. I don't think there's a more proud football player on this football team. And write it down. He will have a big game on Monday yeah, night I because that's the type of guy he is. He's a t- ultimate team guy, and he will come out. I and agree. I feel sorry for the Dolphins. I yeah, agree. and I'll and I'll I'll add on that. You know, I think. The offensive line had some struggles early. Ryan Khalil not in there. There wasn't a whole lot of push up the middle. So you can see why Jonathan Stewart sometimes wants to cut it back, maybe get to the backside of a play. Uh, but now, I mean, after the Falcons game, uh, pretty good tackles in there. I think you saw really good push both as by that interior three. And there's one play where Jonathan Stewart – uh, you know, cuts that whole thing back. But if he just kind of sticks in the A gap right there off the center in the guard, um, that's going to be a big run for him and, and possibly avoids that fumble. And I think, you know, he has to, it, it's a process of trusting that O line. Now they seem to be really getting some movement and getting some things done up front. Now he has to go back to what he does best is running north and south. You, uh, I mean, stay right there for a point. I'll get you both to comment on that because here again, you have one running style for a certain type of blocking. And the play you were talking about is a gap scheme. Gap scheme, double team, front side, borrow from the backside, tight end, guard, whatever, whatever combination. I'm of the belief that there's no cutback on gap scheme because if you do the numbers count, there's always going to be one or two guys hanging about, hanging out back there unblocked. And, and, it, and it really drives me crazy when you see an unblocked guy make a tackle, and then jump up and beat. I'm sorry, Ruh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ruh. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm jumping on defensive guys. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> but here again, it's scheme. It, it is. And and so from from the offensive standpoint, the offensive line, and, and Kevin, you can probably attest to this more, there's a couple of different schemes. You have a one-two combo where you have a guy who you would probably block for a little bit differently and Stu. But then when you have a McCaffrey who is a little bit quicker, you have to have a back that's going to be, be slow to let his blocks take place, or you're going to have to have the offensive line who's going to have to get on their guys and stay on them, not knowing where he's going to be at. So there, this could be difficult. And then you have in the pass protection you know, a quarterback that might drift a little bit at times. So this offensive line isn't necessarily a traditional – offensive line where they know exactly they've got a lot of moving parts that they have to be uh, agile to. Yeah, and I think, you know, with that gap scheme, there's really kind of a an area that they're designed to hit, and they're reading some guys up front that if, if he goes, you know, they got their zone blocking to the left and a guy moves outside, they're going to a cut, a subtle cut to the backside, not a cut way back. And so, um, you know, on that designed run, you know, it's you're trying to hit a gap. Um, but if, if you have to cut it, it's usually maybe just one gap front side or one gap back side, and that's what keeps uh, the play kind of pushing forward and doing north and south. Well, we told you we are going to get deep because, mm. mm. look, we go on a half an hour talking about gap schemes and blocking and all that stuff, but bottom line is you got to run to win. Run to win. Uh, that's that's one of my all-time favorite books, by the way, by mm. Vince Lombardi. Mm. Read one of the classics, Run to Win. So, um, I guys, a lot coming up. Uh, leading up to Monday night. Uh, Panther fans, you want to hear us chop some things up? We'll be part of a 30 minute Prime Panthers in Prime Time special. Uh, prime time. time. Yeah, prime y'all might time. have to change your call on that. <laughs> Panthers in Prime Time special, 645 on Panthers.com. These guys will be here. We'll also have Max Henson and Brian Strickland from Panthers.com. Also, uh, uh, Bill Voth will be there. Uh, with the latest news and information leading up to that game. I mean, this guy will have on track shoes 
running around the field picking up the latest news and and uh, information there. So we'll have him on. So a good show there. Panthers TV, Panthers Digital getting together for a 30-minute special. And uh, I know we could have done 30 minutes here, guys. But Easy. Yep. But Panther fans, I will say, you, if it happens between the lines, we will talk about it here on All 22 because the, the film, film don't, don't lie. lie. We'll see you here next time.